If you're only eating one meal a day and fasting for 24 hours at a time, I'm gonna guess you're probably not doing it for no reason. You either wanna lose weight, get leaner, or stay lean without obsessing over your diet and without micromanaging what you're eating all day long. And out of all the intermittent fasting protocols, OMAD is definitely one of the most convenient and effective. Not only can it help you burn fat in a non-restrictive way, but it can also help you be more productive and improve your health through the power of something known as autophagy. However, as this diet plan becomes more and more popular and mainstream, I see a lot of people making mistakes, and some of these mistakes can easily make the whole plan backfire. The biggest problem is that for some reason, a lot of people are under the impression that you can't possibly get fatter if you're just eating one meal a day. But if you're making a couple of these mistakes that I'm about to go over, you can easily wind up gaining weight and body fat rather than losing it, even if you are just eating once per day. And it doesn't take a long time for these mistakes to add up. In fact, the very first mistake is jumping in and starting too soon before you know how to manage your hunger. Even though there are things that you can do to manage your hunger, for example, a meta-analysis on the effects of coffee and caffeine found that coffee could help reduce your appetite anywhere from half an hour to four hours after drinking it. So even though there are things like coffee that can help, nothing is gonna help as much as time and practice will. If today was the first time in your life that you ever tried swimming, you probably wouldn't want to start in the deep end. In the same way, it's a bad idea to start with one of the most difficult fasting protocols right out the gate. This is because regardless of how much coffee you drink, your regular eating habits have a much bigger influence on your appetite and hunger. You might already know that you have a hormone in your body known as ghrelin. And when ghrelin is released, it's responsible for sending hunger signals to your brain, which increases your appetite. What most people don't know is that studies show that ghrelin levels will spike up at the times of the day that you normally do eat, which for most people is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This happens automatically. Your body will just let you know that it's time to eat. This same study also showed that about two hours after the initial spike in ghrelin, it dropped back down to normal levels. This means that if you normally get hungry around breakfast time, if you simply wait an hour or two, the hunger you feel should subside. If you just jump into an OMAD diet plan without knowing this and you feel like that hungry feeling will never go away, you might feel like you have no choice but to throw in the towel too early before your body starts to actually adapt to your new eating schedule. If you do quit and give in to that hunger, you can easily wind up binging. On the other hand, if you push through in the beginning, you'll be amazed at how much easier it actually gets. Now you might not believe that a lot of the hunger that you currently feel throughout the day is a conditioned hunger response brought about by your habits, but there is plenty of scientific evidence that reaches as far back as almost 100 years that supports this idea. And this doesn't just apply to the time of the day that you're used to eating, such as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can pair all sorts of activities with conditioned hunger responses. Examples of this include always having to eat something while you're watching TV, while bored, or while under stress. In these scenarios, the TV, the boredom, and the stress themselves all become triggers that make you feel hungry automatically. The good news is that these hunger responses are not set in stone, and fasting is the very thing that can actually break these automatic responses. But right now, since you probably have multiple conditioned hunger responses, if you try to break all of them at once, you'll most likely be overwhelmed. This is why you shouldn't jump straight into a 24-hour fast, and instead, you should start breaking these habits one at a time. Starting with a 16-hour fast is a much better idea, but even 16 hours of fasting may feel too difficult for some of you. So to help you break your regular eating habits, you could first start with a fasting protocol that's even shorter, like a 14 or even 12-hour fast, and then work your way up. The next mistake that could be making you fatter is one of the most obvious that I'm hoping most of you already know to avoid eating junk food. Now, the good news about OMAD is that by skipping meals, you save a whole bunch of calories and macros for whenever you do choose to eat your one big meal. That means that when you do finally eat, there's more room in your diet for things like junk food. So the mistake isn't eating any junk food at all. It's filling your diet with too much junk food. Like I already said, a lot of you like this plan because of its convenience. So this same attractive aspect might make you also look for other simple ways to make it even more convenient. 
For example, there's no doubt that eating microwavable meals or processed food is much more convenient than cooking a healthy homemade meal. However, eating this way can bring you well above your total daily calories and you'll probably do that with all the wrong macros. What I mean is that most junk food is very high in simple sugar and fat but low in protein. In fact, the amount of protein that you'll be getting by cramming everything into just one meal will probably already be lower than if you spread your meals out evenly throughout the day. So it's very important that you make it a point and a priority to be eating high quality protein packed meals. I recommend that you don't even touch junk food until after you're done eating a healthy meal. It's a lot easier to overeat fattening and sweet tasting food like ice cream, candy, and cake when you're eating them on an empty stomach. This is also why you should have some kind of homemade food prepped in advance, already sitting in the fridge. When your long fast is over, trust me, you're gonna want to eat. And you might have self-control the first day and maybe the second day, but if you have to stand there boiling rice for 30 minutes every day when your fast is over, you're gonna be a lot more likely to start picking at some junk food while you're waiting. So even if you do want to cook a fresh meal for yourself daily, you should always have something as a backup already sitting in the fridge, even if it's some fruits and vegetables. And this actually brings me to my next mistake, which happens to a lot of people that don't eat enough vegetables, and that's overeating. That's right, even if you're eating healthy sources of carbohydrates like sweet potatoes, rice, and oatmeal, as well as healthy sources of fats and proteins, but you're not eating any junk food at all, you could still overdo it. At the end of the day, OMAD works by reducing your total daily calories low enough to put your body into a caloric deficit. If you're not in that deficit, you're not gonna be losing weight, and if you're eating too much, you'll wind up gaining weight. One way to avoid this is by planning your meals out ahead of time. You could take the time to weigh out your food and count up your calories and macros beforehand. However, this kind of kills the whole convenience aspect of the plan, so I could see a lot of you not wanting to do that. But if you're not tracking your calories and macros, then you're gonna need another way to prevent overeating. This is where vegetables come into the picture. Not only will vegetables provide you with most of your micronutrients like vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, but they'll also help fill up your stomach and prevent overeating. If you wanna be successful with OMAD, the number one goal after finishing a 24 hour fast should be to take control of your hunger. If you just start eating randomly, it'll be very easy to overeat. But if you instead start by first eating a healthy source of protein with at least two to three cups of vegetables, you'll notice that so much of that hunger that you had will be gone. And that's exactly what you want. With OMAD, you shouldn't be going to bed every day hungry because you had to cut yourself off of eating. In fact, that's a sure way to fail your plan. Ideally, you would want to stop eating when you feel full and your body tells you that you've had enough. Starting your meal with a healthy source of protein and vegetables and only then moving on to the other things that you want to eat will help you feel satisfied without overeating too many calories. But what if you find yourself feeling hungrier or more and more tired as the days go by? What if you eat so many vegetables that your stomach feels full, but at the end of every day, your calories are consistently really low? Well, this is where another one of our mistakes comes into play, thinking that one meal a day means one meal every day. To be successful with OMAD, it doesn't mean that you can never eat more than just one meal. On certain days, you'll require more calories, more protein, and more nutrients to recover. For example, if you have an extremely intense workout, you may need an extra meal to get enough protein and enough carbs to replenish your glycogen stores and to repair your muscles. Another example is if for some strange reason you weren't really hungry during your last eating window and you ate very little. That doesn't mean that you always have to wait until your next meal 24 whole hours later. Remember that this whole fat loss process works based off of totals and if your totals aren't adding up over the days and the weeks, you may need to throw in another meal. If you're just not getting enough calories during your eating window day after day, you'll feel it adding up leading to tiredness, aches, and flu-like symptoms. Instead of ignoring it and turning it into a bigger problem than it is, you should just throw in an extra meal. Things happen in life and you're not a robot, so you can't expect to get perfectly portioned meals every single day. For a lot of you, limiting yourself to just one meal a day will automatically put you at a large deficit, and that could add up over the days, weeks, and months on this plan. If you throw in an extra meal one day because you notice that you're either way too hungry or you just need the extra calories, it'll most likely help you much more than it'll hurt you. There is no special magical fat burning process that'll stop working if you happen to eat one extra meal. 
under eating can be just as bad as overeating because you have to remember that if you feel starving or tired day in and day out, you'll probably wind up binging on everything in sight, which will ruin all your hard work. Instead of letting it get to that extreme, you should feel 100% comfortable occasionally switching away from a one meal per day structure when you need to. The last mistake that I want to go over today is not staying busy. This is a much bigger mistake than most people think because if you're not busy doing other things, you're going to be sitting there staring at the clock until your 24 hour fast is over. And if you're obsessing about a meal in your head or about the clock reaching that special time that you're waiting for, you're probably going to be eating everything in sight when you're finally allowed to if you even make it that far. Even if you don't binge, you're not going to last on OMAD very long because you're not making it a part of your life. Instead, you're turning it into a torturous exercise. If you just stop thinking that you're going to starve and if you simply forget about eating and focus on your job, your family and improving your life, you'll find yourself being extremely productive and the hours will fly by instead of dragging on. The bottom line is that you don't want to feel like you're a slave to the clock. If one day you happen to get done with work early and you really feel really hungry a couple hours before your fast is technically over, then just break your fast a couple hours earlier. If on some other day you find yourself so caught up and busy that you forget about breaking your fast and you wind up having to eat a few hours later, then that's totally fine as well. Ultimately, the small day-to-day -day modifications you make will balance out over time. But the only way that you'll be sticking to this diet plan over time is if you make your diet fit into your life rather than fitting your life around your diet. That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I release more free tips and tricks just like the ones you found in this video. Also, if you're looking for a done for you fasting plan that'll help you burn fat fast without the constant trial and error, check out my six week challenge. The challenge comes with a custom diet plan that includes a ton of intermittent fasting protocols, including a one meal a day option. On average, people that take part in the challenge are losing either 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only 42 days. Not only will you get a custom diet plan, but you'll also get a 42 day workout plan, a full video exercise library, a recipe book, and an accountability coach that'll mentor you and guide you through the entire process, as well as much, much more. The best part is, as long as you don't cheat and you don't quit on us for the six weeks, not only will you have transformed your body at the end of it, but you'll also get the whole challenge for free. To find out more, you can click the link below or you could visit the website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.